Good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are uh, when you're uh, listening to this first of our monthly Romero reports. This is a report coming to you from the Romero Institute uh, based in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, we are uh, now at the middle of June, uh, right when all the United States Supreme Court cases, the major cases, are, are being determined. Uh, we are a public justice organization, a, uh, a public interest law firm, and public policy center. Uh, we are the progeny or the inheritor of the Christic Institute, uh, which uh, I was the founder of uh, and the chief counsel for in Washington, D.C. from 1980 to 1992. The Romero Institute has existed since 1992, all the way through up until including now. We are the public justice organization that sponsors a number of different programs. Uh, we run the Lakota People's Law Project with offices up in South Dakota and North Dakota. We run the Less Green California major project uh, proposing legislation to address climate change here in the state of California. Uh, we represent a major uh, media project that is going on to, uh, to develop documentary films, audio podcasts, and uh, long-term scripted dramatic series based upon the cases uh, that we do. Uh, this first report is just to give you a, a general idea for those of you who do not know about what the general premises of our Romero Institute are over and above the individuated projects that we work on. The Romero Institute, as I indicated, is the progeny of the Christic Institute that was founded in Washington, D.C. in 1980 in a joint effort by the United States Jesuit uh, headquarters in Washington, D.C. and the National Organization for Women. Not a likely marriage, uh, but one that is, has gone on for uh, now over 45, 42 years. Uh, so what we want to do is give you an idea of what the major premises are that we pursue. That justice is a rather abstract term that many of you may interpret in whatever ways you might. But what we are talking about is the major ethical principles that are grounded in classic faith traditions throughout the world. Uh, and these most obviously uh, in, entail in Western civilization uh, the, the Jewish and Christian traditions, specifically Catholic and Protestant for the most part, uh, but others, the Unitarian Church and others, that these uh, offices have social ministry divisions that actually attempt to implement the ethical principles that they perceive to be derived from their spiritual insights. Uh, this is the this is the intuitionist school that has been recognized by uh, John Rawls, for example, the head of the Department of Philosophy at Harvard University, in his very well known uh, theory of justice uh, masterpiece. Uh, we are we are working from the initial premises of the Society of Jesus, uh, which is the Jesuit order inside the largest single uh, Christian denomination in all of Western civilization. Uh, but this is a, a more precise uh, set of ethical principles uh, than the more general principles that may abide in other traditions. Uh, there is a 32nd general congregation of the Jesuit provincials that was convened uh, back in 1975 that is a very important set of documents that came out talking about the obligation on the part of people motivated by spiritual values to take action every single day to disassemble the structural sources of injustice on the planet. And uh, we understand that that entails a commensurate responsibility to try to build alternative structures and programs uh, to effectuate justice. So this is what we are engaged in. We have uh, done numerous cases down through the years. Uh, we are known for having done the Karen Silkwood case uh, that basically stopped the construction of all private new nuclear power plants uh, in the United States uh, since 1979. 
We also did the Iran-Contra case that stopped the shipping, secret shipping of weapons and explosives uh, to the Contras in Central America, and the smuggling of massive amounts of cocaine by that enterprise here into the United States. Uh, we did the first of the number of uh, different uh, lawsuits in criminal defenses arising from the American sanctuary movement down in Texas. Uh, we've done the, uh, the defense of Chase Iron Eyes, who was designated as the ringleader uh, of the uprising of the indigenous people against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh, we've done numerous cases like this. We are also noted for having drafted the initial legislation that became Senate Bill 1230 here in California. There are other major projects that we've been involved in down through the years. Uh, I, uh, before setting up uh, with Sarah Nelson uh, and Father Bill Davis, the Christie Institute in 1980, I was one of the legal counsel for the New York Times in the Pentagon Papers case, uh, uh, securing the right to publish all 47 volumes of the top secret report on the Vietnam War. Uh, I was also the one that initiated as one of the founding uh, members of the Harvard Civil Rights Law Review, I initiated the case that established the right of journalists to protect their confidential news sources. Uh, I was one of the legal team at uh, Attorney F. Lee Bailey's office uh, the, the, in the Watergate burglary case that represented uh, James McCord, the former CIA wiretapping specialist who blew the whistle on Richard Nixon uh, and the plumber, plumber's unit. It resulted in the resignation of uh, President Nixon and the criminal uh, prosecution and imprisonment of a number of the people that were involved in authorizing the Watergate burglary. The, uh, I was at the Wounded Knee occupation back in 1973. I served as uh, co-counsel for the Native American Rights Committee for ACLU National. So there's a, a background that, that we have. Sarah Nelson, our executive director and vice president, will uh, tell you what her particular background is uh, that she brings to being the co-founder with me uh, of the uh, Christic Institute and the Progeny Romero Institute. Uh, as you may have guessed, uh, the Romero Institute is named after Archbishop Oscar Romero, the uh, Archbishop of El Salvador, who was assassinated uh, by death squads uh, in El Salvador, headed up by Roberto Dubasson, uh, funded and trained by an element of the Central Intelligence Agency of our United States government. Uh, and uh, uh, Archbishop Romero has now been made a saint uh, in the Catholic Church, uh, standing up for justice against uh, tyranny and oppression of the people there. That's uh, We take our name from that. Our original name of the Christic Institute was taken from Tehard de Chardin, uh, the Jesuit paleontologist who had discovered the existence of Peking man. Uh, he was uh, promulgating the thesis that our human family is evolving a faculty uh, like seeing or hearing uh, by means of which we can discern the unitive phenomenon that bonds our entire universe together uh, into one integrated a whole uh, and that we as a human family have a faculty by means of which we can discern what type of human conduct both individual and collective is either harmonious with or disharmonious to this uh, unifying energy in the universe. That's the Christic force. That was how we took our name uh, as the Christic Institute in the immediate aftermath of our winning a $10.5 million judgment against the Kerr-McGee Nuclear Corporation in Oklahoma back in 1979. So that's, that's who we are, uh, that uh, we, will, we will give you reports uh, each month uh, with regard to the progress that we're making, not only on the individual projects that we're engaged in, but in our pursuit of the overall general mission of deconstructing the structural sources of injustice, not just here in Western civilization, but uh, in Eastern civilization as well, with which there are some serious problems, as you know. That is, that is the overall strategic task that we're engaged in. The tactical means by which we are doing this is through the individual programs that we've established. And there are a lot of logistical details to bring you up to date on uh, that are included in these major projects that we're working on. So we will come to you each month 
uh, Sarah Nelson, our executive director and vice president, myself as the president and general counsel for our Romero Institute. Uh, and from time to time, we will have project directors who will provide additional details on a monthly basis uh, with regard to the progress of individual projects. So that's the Romero Institute. Uh, we want you to uh, tune in each month for our Romero report. And uh, any questions that you have, you can uh, contact us at our website, which is RomeroInstitute.org. Uh, the Romero, R-O-M-E-R-O, -E the RomeroInstitute.org. You can go to our website and contact us and communicate any questions and give us your support, both through actions that we ask you to undertake to carry into effect the objectives of our programs uh, and also financial support to the extent to which you feel disposed to help us. This is the first installment of our Romero Institute monthly report. Thank you for joining us.